First of all, I'm giving praises and honor to God. Honor to Pastor Nolan in his absence. Yeah. To Reverend Williams in his absence. Mm -hmm. To the deacons of this church. Bless. To all the leaders of this church. Praise the Lord. To you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. It is indeed a blessing to stand before you this Mother's Day. I tell people that this is one of the hardest mm -hmm. seasons of the year for me. I was a mama's baby. Mm -hmm. And when you know you was a mama's baby and mama's gone, right. you start feeling some type of way. Right. But I thank God that it's because of his strength that he's given me that I'm able to stand before you this morning. I want to just put a disclaimer out there this morning. Children, get closer to your mother. Mothers, get closer to your children. Can I be honest with you? There are some people this morning that's celebrating their first Mother's Day without their mother. Mothers ain't promised to us forever. And when you have an opportunity to teach, you have an opportunity to have a mother. Yeah. Spend time with that mother. Yeah. Cherish that mother. Because you don't know if it's your last Mother's Day oh, with your you. mother. Amen. Amen. So again, I'm grateful this morning. And there is a word from God. First uh, Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. And because it's Youth Sunday, I want to read from the New Living Translation because I, I want these kids to understand this message. Amen. And I'm reading from verse 16. Sometime later, two harlots came to the king to have an argument settled. Please, my lord, one of them began, this woman and I live in the same house. I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. Three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. We were the only two in the house. But her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. Then she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. And she laid her dead child in my arms mm. and took mine to sleep beside her. Mm. And in the morning, when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son. Mm. Look at your neighbor and say, I know my child. I know my child. <laughs> then the other woman interrupted. It certainly was your son, and the living son is mine. Mm. No, the first woman said, the living child is mine, and the dead one is yours. And so they all get back and forth before the king. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Mm. Both of you claim that the living child is yours. And each of you said that the dead one is the other. All right, bring me a sword. Mm. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, let the living child cut the living child in two. My, my, my. And give half to one woman and half to the other. Then the woman who the real mother, say the real mother, the real mother. of the living child who loved him very much cried out, oh no my lord, give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, alright, he will be neither yours nor mine. Mm -mm. Divide him between us. Uh -uh. Then the king said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live. For she is 
real. The mother. Yeah. You may be seated. All right. I feel like preaching this. Come morning. on now. If I can tag this text with a topic, tag I'm going to tag with a topic, baby <laughs> mama drama. Come on. If I gave you a subtopic, it's nothing like a mother's love. All right. Nothing like a mother's love. Well, we look at this text and we find two women. Well, we find two baby mamas. Mm. Why do we call them baby mamas? Because they even made mention that there were no, no one else in the house but those two. So there was no daddy in the picture. Can I be honest with you? A whole lot of people are in situations to this day that there are fatherless parents in the picture. So there are a lot of women that stepping in as fathers and mothers. Some women are having to do double duties, you know. It's sad, but sometimes moms got to step in for uh, Dance and Donuts Day. Uh, but, but, but here it is, these two women, the first point I want to talk about, no mother is perfect. Can I be honest with you? We all strive for perfection, and we all have in a mindset that we want things done the right way. Can I just be honest with you? Everybody born wasn't born into a married family. There are some real situations where some people are what we call baby mamas, or some mama's babies, daddy's babies. Hey, can I just be honest with you? There are some situations where you found yourself in a situation where a child is being born and, and the daddy not trying to be in the picture. Oh yeah, there are some mothers that you were young and dumb and found yourself in a situation where now you're raising a child and you're still in high school. You're, but you know what? Don't you thank God for grace? In your imperfections, you serve a perfect perfectionist God. In the midst of you not doing things the right way, he still puts you on a path to raise your child the right way. No, you know, it, 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 it sounds good to where we wait until we have, until we're married to have kids. We wait until, that sounds real good. But then there's some situations that women find themselves in an unperfect situation. They end up finding themselves where they're trying to figure out what's their next steps. Steps, And then you have grandmothers that have to step in and, 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 and literally help mother the child because their child is still a child that's raising a child. Imperfected parents. Now mothers not being perfect. We find two mothers in this, this, this text and the, the text called them a harlot. Harlots, in, okay, can I just be real? They were prostitutes. They were all over the place. And, and, and they found themselves pregnant. And then the text said that one gave birth one day, and then the other one gave birth three days later. Even in their imperfections, both parents loved the kids. One just happened to make a major mistake and rolled over on her child. She loved her child so much that she stole the other woman's child. Mm. Ain't that sad? That's, that's, hey, you know what? That sounds like some off Netflix, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just be honest with you. That oh, sounds like some gossip for real. Oh, Mark. Yeah. But, but she goes and she steals this other woman's baby. And then she put the dead baby next to the woman's baby that was living. All of a sudden, the next morning, that woman stood up and she was ready to nurse her baby to find out that the baby next to her was dead. Uh, but then it says, the text says that the morning's light. Can I be honest with you? I look in my child's eyes. I know my child. And you know, a lot of parents quickly say that I know my baby. I, you know what your baby looked like. You know what you went to sleep next to the night before. And when you woke up, you realized that that baby was not your baby. Something wrong with this picture. Something ain't right about this picture. Let me go find this other chick. Yo, 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 uh, 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 yo, chick, let me hide that shoe. <laughs> Can you give me what belongs to me? Yeah. Can you give me back my baby? Yeah. The woman said, no. That dead baby yours. She said, no. I know what my baby looked like. Even in the midst of my imperfection, like, my perfected mindset knows my child. She realized that her child was her child. 
And that lady done jacked her for her child. She wanted her baby back. Look at your baby and say, I, I, I got to get back what's mine. Not only was is no mother perfect, but God has the answers to a mother's problems. Well, these women realized that we got to settle this situation one way or another. So they decide to go to the king. Remember I told you, God has the answers to all mother's problems. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The good part about the king is King Solomon was a wise king. If you look back in verse 10, God asked Solomon, what is it that you wanted? What is it that you want from me as a king? Do you want wealth? Do you want longevity? But he said, no, no, Lord, I just want wisdom. I need to be able to have wisdom and discernment. I'm not like these other kings. I, I, I want to make sure that as a king, I make wise decisions. So God knew that in the midst of this situation, in the midst of this baby mama drama, he put a wise king to settle the situation. Don't you know what? Sometimes as parents, you raise children and sometimes they go astray. And you say to your mindset, well, well, God, I, I, I call myself raising them right. I, I had them in church year after year, day after day, week after week. Lord, where did I go wrong? But sometimes God said, you know what? When you think it's not your hands, that's because it's in my hands. Sometimes you got to let, let wisdom take its course. Yeah, that child may stray away, but all you got to do is still pray for that child. Can I be honest with you? I was one of those children that strayed away. Yeah, I was in church growing up all my life. But you know what? When I got to college, I wowed it out. I began to hit every club I can, every party I can. But even the time I got shot in, I felt my mama praying for me. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to just know that some people praying for you in the midst of all that you're doing. Keep praying for your children. Keep believing that you know what? God's got a way to bring my kids back into the fold. You know what? Even in the midst of trials and tribulations, I knew how to pray. Even when things came, heartaches and pain came my way, I still knew how to go back to the Lord. But I had a praying mom. And some of y'all might not have a praying mother, but you might have had a praying grandmother. And they, they wavered night after night, day after day, all because of you. Aren't you grateful that you serve a God that will put mothers on their knees and keep them praying because they know that the life you live in ain't the life they raise you to live. But here it is. The king says, let me get this straight. Both of y'all are saying that the living child is yours. And both of y'all are saying that the dead child is the other one's child. You know, he had to use wisdom in this situation. What did he say? King Solomon says what? Do me a favor, y'all. Bring me a sword. Bring me a sword. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and divide this child in half. That's when wisdom stuck in. But, but, but here it is. Not only are no mother's perfect, but then God has the answers to a mother's problem. But then I got to close with, there's nothing like a mother's passion. Right, 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 right. Well, the first mother said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't cut the child. Give that woman a child. Then because I want the child to leave. Can I be honest with you? Real mothers gonna step aside for the real situation be handled the right way. She said, yeah, I love my baby. I love my child. But if it's in the best interest for my child to live, then I gotta do what I gotta do to make sure that this child does not die. Well, can I give you another situation? Come here, Moses. Moses was born to a woman that was a Hebrew. Well, Pharaoh had made rules and said that no Hebrew children could be born until they would have to be killed 
But Moses' mother said that when the child was born, there was something about that child. There was a godly child, and, 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 and there was something about that child that I can't kill this child. What did Moses' mother do? She put the child in a basket, made sure that the basket was floating, put it out on reeds for it to be found. Pharaoh's daughter found the child, and, and, and she told her maid to go bring the basket here. When she opened the basket, she realized there was a baby in the basket. And then she said, hold up. I need someone to nurse this baby. Moses' sister was looking from a ways off. And she turned around and said, you know what? I'll take this baby back for the woman back home, the Hebrew woman, to nurse it. Pharaoh's daughter said, yeah, send her to nurse it. But then once she took the baby back, the mama nursed it. But she didn't want the child to die. So she sent the baby back to Pharaoh's daughter for the baby to be born and grew up to be a leader. Can I be honest with you? Uh, uh, Moses experienced the life of having two mamas. One birthed and then one raised him. Some people are in that situation. Well, here it is. They're like this woman in the text. She said, you know what? I'm willing to give up my baby only because I wanted to live. Yeah, yeah. But then the other woman says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, go ahead and cut the baby in half. That way, neither one of us will have a child. But then the king says, you know what? Give the other woman that said, let the baby live. That's her child. And how did the king know through wisdom? It's nothing like a mother's love. Even in the midst of a baby mama's drama, God knows how to let his love show up yeah. in the answer of a mother. Can I be honest with you? Regardless of what you do and what your child do, you still learn to love that mother. Regardless of how much hell that child causes you, you still have love for that mother. Am I right about it? Well, I'm going to close with one more mother by the name of Mary. She loved her son so much that she showed up at Calvary's cross yeah, 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 yeah. in the midst of knowing that her child was about to die. Yeah, yeah, her yeah. love kept her at Calvary's cross. This same mother was looking at her son with a crown of thorns on his head. But her love kept with her. The same mother looked at this child with uh, nails in his hands, nails in his feet, but yet in the midst of it, her love kept her at Calvary's cross. Somebody asked me, what's love got to do with it? Everybody. Love has a lot to do with it. Yeah. It's because of love. A mother's love, she'll tell you that I'll show up when nobody else will. I'll show up in the midst of trials. I'll show up in the midst of tribulations. I'll show up in the midst of heartaches. I'll show up in the midst of pain. I'll show up in the midst of sadness. I'll show up in the midst of grief. I'll show up when nobody else will. Yeah. That's a mother's love. Yeah. <laughs> the king used wisdom in the midst of the trauma. In the midst of the baby mama trauma. He used wisdom to discern who the real mother was. And can I be honest with you? Mothers, don't give up on your children. Children, obey your mothers. Listen, can I be honest with you? Mothers would go without eating to make sure their kids eat. Mothers would go without buying themselves clothes to make sure that their kids got clothes. Mothers will make sure that you're able to pay, to pay for you to go on a field trip 
and figure out the light bill later. That's a mother's love. Mothers, in the midst of your sickness, will lay up under you, knowing that there's a chance that she can get sick too. That's a mother's love. Mothers, in the midnight hour, can bring your mom one or two times and get up out of her bed to go see about her baby. That's a 